New shiny iPhone 5. New shiny iPhone 5. New shiny iPhone 5. the same things like I don't care about money, money can't buy happiness, we scream at the government to tax the rich and give to the poor instead of leveling up our own financial knowledge to understand the game. We always want to get without giving, but when the time comes money does care about you and when you are being busy being ignorant about your finances money will come for you to claim its debt whether you can afford it or not. We Spartans are not ignorant. We are humble for new knowledge. We understand that to not care about money, we should first understand it instead of ignore it. So that in the future our financial statements will be too great to even care about money because we will have an abundance of it. I know a lot of people who say exactly the same thing. I do not care about money. Like it is some brave thing to say, or it is wrong to care about money. And they are basically being very ignorant of the understanding how it actually works. And because of that, they make a lot of stupid financial decisions, like big stupid financial decisions. Or they buy a lot of crap uh, which they don't need. For example, they buy a lot of new furniture, they go out drinking, spending all their money, or they, 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 they go on holiday and they spend 2000 euros because they want to have a feeling of richness, they want to uh, you know, experience the rich life and spend all their money well at the same time having shit jobs with shit pay all the year just just to be able to spend like crazy this one time and today I'm gonna be talking about five wisdoms I have learned from the book the richest man in Babylon this is not financial advice this is just one of the most important parts I found to be in this book and I want to share this with you. This is a great book to understand the basics of how you should manage your finances. Any man who will put by one tenth of his earnings consistently and invest it wisely will surely create a valuable estate that will provide an income for him in the future and further guarantee for safety of his family. So the first rule is save at least 10% of your income and make sure that if you receive your income you will pay yourself first. So save this 10% first and then pay all your bills because saving should be your top priority. And if you save 10% every month, it will compound over time. So let's say you earn 3000 a month and you save 10%, so 300 euros. And maybe 300 euros isn't a lot, you know. But when you do this like for one or two years, you will, you will really grow your bank account. Let's say you do it for one year. This 300 euros will become 3600 euros. And what can you buy for 3600 euros? No great things. So save at least 10% of your income and don't spend it all. Make sure you, before you spend, you save it. So the rule is save at least 10% of your income. This is like the bare minimum. I used to save at least 60% of my income. Especially when you when you live at home with your parents or anything like this. And you don't have any big expenses like rent and groceries. You should be able to, to achieve the 60%. And I live on my own, on my own apartment. 
and I used to save 60%. So, and I, I, and a lot of the times when I say I save 60%, a lot of the people are like, how are you doing this? This is impossible. I can't do it. I can't even save 10% because I have got other expenses. And sometimes I look, I take a look at their financial statements, you know, their bank, because I want to help them. And, and I see some crazy expenses, like they, they spend 800, 800 euros a month on like random stuff, which they, they don't need, they, they want. They, these are things like new cute uh, furniture, new electronics, uh, like buying new clothes seven, eight times a year basically spending like ten thousands of euros on new clothes and these are just all these small decisions with which make you not able to save this ten percent so the important thing to keep in mind is just make sure you save it before you even got a chance to to spend it because if you save it first you will know, okay, maybe uh, I save it first now and then I will have like 500 euros left for the rest of the month and I can buy this and this and this. And not like I'm, I'm going to spend this and this and this and then maybe, maybe on the end of the month I will look if I have some money left to save. No. The second one is gold is a willing worker. It is eager to multiply itself when the opportunity presents itself. Put your money to use through investments. So an investment can be um, the stock market, cryptocurrencies, maybe co commodities like gold and silver, but you can also use this money. Um, what I used to do when I was younger, I bought like, there was like this huge festival and it's always sold, sold out. So I bought like 20 tickets and I sold them for like 30 euros a piece more. So, when you invest your money, your money can actually work for you. So, the average return on like, let's say the stock market or gold and silver is like 8% each year. Sometimes it will be like 25% and sometimes it will be like minus 10%. But on average, from the last 70 years, it has been like seven to eight percent and if, if you let's say you you have ten thousand euros when you put eight percent each year this ten thousand euros will actually grow exponentially so so when you have this ten thousand euros the first year it's just ten thousand after one year it will be like ten thousand eight hundred with eight percent interest the second year it will be more because you have now 10,800 times 8% interest. So you can actually grow your um, your investments exponentially. And that's very interesting, especially when you do it for the long term. Let's say you do it for like 30 years, 50 years, to say for your retirement, right? Um, it is astonishing how much you can actually accomplish by just like saving a thousand euros a month so when they talk about gold is a willing worker they mean put your money somewhere where it can make money for you don't just keep it in a bank because if you keep it in a bank it it is worthless because inflation and the third wisdom is the inexperienced owner of gold who trusts his own judgment and invests it in a business or purpose with which he is not familiar too often finds his judg judgment imperfect and pays with his treasure for his inexperience Make sure you seek advice from wise men in the handling of gold. Only lend your gold to purposes which is guaranteed to get your gold back. So this piece is basically about make sure you invest safe and you seek the right advice. 
most financial advisors that we have do not even preach what they teach. So what do I mean by this? They don't even invest themselves. They tell you all these great investment strategies, yeah, do this, do that. But they don't even invest money themselves. I used to work at this pension fund. So this is like when you become 68, you can retire and, uh, and we give money to you. I used to work there and you would think people who work there are financial intelligent and they know what they're talking about and they know how the, the game works with inflation and stuff. They don't. They don't know anything. They maybe know the, 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 the basic, like, oh, inflation is bad. But when you really talk to them, you <laughs> realize they are just, they are just ignorant. They don't know anything about what they are saying. And so I have, so it's very important to seek the advice of somebody who is actually doing thing you want to do, and make sure you 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 invest your time to truly like understand how it works. Like read a book, go onto some, watch a few, watch some YouTube channel. And so when you don't do this, you get like you will make stupid financial decisions and you will lose your money. I have this friend who she wanted to start a business. So this is great, right? And, and the first thing she did was like, I need a website. So she went online, uh, found somebody who was willing to build her website and he asked 2000 euros for it. So she did it. She, she, she made the website and she paid 2,000 euros and after one month she decided hmm, I'm gonna quit, uh, I don't wanna do this business anymore. So <laughs> basically she paid 2,000 euros for this website which was just a waste of her money because she, she decided not to start a business at all, she's working in a normal job right now, having a website of 2,000 euros, if she would be smart, she would have found some information online about some free websites to start with. And you can actually need a build, you can actually get a free website online for, for very cheap, or you can make it yourself online. It's very, it's, it's pretty easy. And Maybe the smartest thing for her to do was not start a business or not start a website right away, but just make sure you actually know what you want before you spend 2,000 euros on a website, right? So <laughs> the fourth wisdom is don't blame your faith for your own weaknesses. The soul of a slave whines and gives blames to others. The soul of a free man takes life by the horns and conquers challenges. So there are so many people who talk about all the things why something is not possible. Oh, it is not possible because I am, I am, I don't have the time, uh, I'm weak. You can never get rich and stuff like this. And it is all about the right mindset. So in a book, this was there was this great story about basically two slaves. One of them was constantly complaining about his faith and how, how cruel these people are and how he was going to escape. And the other one was uh, accepting his faith and he was trying to make the best of it. So what he did, this, this guy was trying to make the best of it. He, he, he tried to sell himself on the slave market and found a great slave owner. And he did a lot of great effort to make the best out of himself. And at the end, he becomes a free man because he accepted this faith and he made the best out of it. The other slave um, kept on complaining and he had to work for the king under bare conditions. And because he was complaining and, and, and all this stuff, he had this 
like really a lot of anger inside. So he picks a fight with one of the guards and the guards end up dead. And the result of this was that he, this slave, um, had to pay for this crime with his own death. So one of the, 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 the important part here is that it is all about the mindset. Like if you keep on whining how bad your situation is, instead of actually taking action and trying to make the best out of it, then you will end up like a slave. Too often I see people with this very closed mindset and when I talk with them about my business and stuff like this, I hear them saying things like, that's impossible, you can't do this. They think in all the things that are not possible instead of thinking in all the things that are possible to reach this goal. The fifth wisdom is we cannot afford to be without adequate protection. We have to be prepared for what is coming. Uh, it is very important to have an alternative source of income. And you need to make sure you have sufficient income for the future. So let's look at the upcoming financial crisis. So one of the results of this crisis will be that your employer will fire people because he has to save a lot of money. And so you basically become, you basically end up without any income and you have to search for another job. But this is the financial crisis and there aren't many jobs. You can be happy if you, if you have a job. So this can be a very hard part because you don't have any income, you can't find any job. And if you haven't built anything for yourself, which actually generates income for yourself without you working, you can be in a very harsh situation. Another thing that's our reality today is that inflation is really, really high. So we have like, we had this peak in inflation of 70% here in the Netherlands. And that's like a raise that means that your whole income will actually decrease by 70%. Money stays the same, but you can buy, you can by 70% less than last year. So one of the ways you can prepare for a for your future, whether it is because of a financial crisis or your there ha there is happening something in your life. So what I would suggest is that um, you look for ways to get income into your pocket without you even working. And this is through a business or investments. For example, you have these investments where you invest and they will give you dividends. So this means um, they, will, they will actually pay out money to you every month. And this is a great way to actually generate like passive income without you even working. So remember Spartans, we live in a world where money plays a significant role in our lives. Money is a tool that can be used to achieve great things, but it can also create problems if not managed correctly. That's why it is important to take control of your finances and make informed decisions that will allow you to live a comfortable life, free from financial stress. So my friends, the time to start handling your money wisely is now. Take charge of your finances and make smart decisions that will help you achieve your financial goals and live a comfortable life. And remember, the only limitations are those we set up in our own minds.